Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. This is the NFL Gambling Picks Show for week number four. And this will be probably the quickest that we have ever gone through this because I think that we are losing mic battery. We're just going to be real it's, honest with you. It's also in the middle of the night slash yeah, morning. It is uh, about 1.30 a.m. Eastern time that we are recording this on Wednesday morning. So... <sighs> little bit of dragon ass here. You better believe that. You can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. You can find our YouTube, our Facebook, our Twitters, our podcasts, everything about us Boom. over there. Winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube or on your favorite podcast app. If you're listening on the Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a nice five-star review and hit that subscribe button. We would really, really appreciate it. The show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Chris, I've got five bets. What you got, four? I got four. All right, I'm going to start us off then. Um, oh, here's our recap. I went one and five last week. Complete horse crap job by me. I lost $279. Uh, you went two and three. You lost $59. On the year, I am five and twelve. It is the worst I've ever been in the NFL. It's tough. It's really, really bad. You are six and nine. That's the um, worst I've ever been. You can find all of our stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. Click on the gambling picks section. We've got the spreadsheets up there along with every pick that we have made and every dollar amount that we have put on it. You can see where we stand as we go along. Caleb E won our pick'em contest. Make sure you go over to winningcureseverything.com and click in the football picks contest section you can enter as well we don't know what the prize is going to be this week i will know that on thursday Whew, how crazy is that right we'll get you something we're going to get gonna something fun. and it's going to be good it. it's going to yeah. be awesome um uh, caleb e won last week with uh, an eight and two record against the spread he hit the tiebreaker there were several people that went eight and two but caleb got the tiebreaker he wins the, the prize the best man at my wedding he it lives in bangladesh so we may not ship his stuff. We may actually give it to his mother, who lives I mean, in the same town as we do. <laughs> that's right. I will, I will bring it to her place. So very rarely. And this is not rigged, by the way. He, you can follow the spreadsheet over yeah, on the no, Football we Picks contest. Um, but he he 100% won that thing, and that was awesome because he has played every single week. Since we've done it. Since we've done it. That's we started right. last year, so he's entered in 20-some-odd times. He's one of the won. few friends that I have, which aren't many to begin with, that actually listen and follow. <laughs> yes, it's it's true. Not many of our buddies do, and that's okay. But for those of you that do, we do appreciate you. And those of you that we're not friends with, we would like to be friends with you. Leave a comment on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Hang out with us. Tell us what's up. We go down to Tunica pretty frequently. If you want to fly in and hang out, you just hit us up and let us know. You can, uh, you can always hit us up on the Twitter. That's always a good thing. Or in the comments, or email us, whatever. It's all on the website, winningcureseverything.com. You ready to roll? Let's roll this is going to be fast it's going to be great i am looking forward to it pick number one the tampa bay bucks are going to los angeles memorial coliseum to play against the rams rams coming off of a big time win at the browns on sunday night football you would think this might be a letdown spot i think the bucks are pretty bad i think Jameis is going to throw it to the wrong team i think wade phillips is going to bait him into a whole bunch of mess and he's going to fall right for it I'm all over the Rams here. I know this is a big line. Rams minus 10, I'm taking it. I'm laying all those points, $75 at minus 110 here. What you got for pick number pick number one? I, you could actually get a little bit less juice if you want. Right now, since we've... Doing oh, is this, it minus 105? I got 105. All right, I'm going to do minus 105. Save, save yourself a little bit of that vig. All right, I, uh, I did the eulogy. Last week on Cameron Newton, Kyle Allen. I don't know that Kyle Allen is going to be the greatest quarterback in the world. I don't know that he's going to be just unbelievable like he was last week against the Cardinals. Yeah. What I do know is this. He's a physically helpful, healthy quarterback Yeah. that can move and can throw. And the rest of the team is really good. 
and I like this Panthers roster. I like this Panthers team a lot, and all I need is a capable, competent quarterback, which Cameron was not. Against the Texans, who seem to find themselves every week, it doesn't matter who they play, they are in a gunfight of their lives to end the game. Every They're week. always exciting to watch. They're always fun. They always come down to the last possession. I get a five-point head start knowing that this thing is going to probably come down to a last-minute field goal or a touchdown for somebody to win or lose. By how much, I don't know. I love the five points. I love the five points. Give me 75 bucks. I got, I'm got. i laying 115 is what I'm seeing currently. That's the line we're getting. Okay. What I'm giving you. Minus 115. All right, that sounds good to me. Pick number two for me. I am going to the desert. I'm going to Arizona. I like the Seahawks here. Okay. Seahawks minus five. Back action. The bounce back action. They lose at home to the Saints. I think they might have gotten a little comfortable being at home. Saints coming in without Drew Brees. The Cardinals have not looked good. Last week, I thought they were going to have a bounce back spot. I thought maybe the Panthers were not as good as we thought they were initially. No, it turned out it was just a Cam Newton problem. Cardinals, look, it turns out when you've got a pretty good quarterback, you can score on this team a lot. Oh, yeah. You and I both like Russell Wilson. I do like Russell Wilson. I'm all Wilson. over it here. Five points is not nearly enough. I'm putting 50 bucks on the Seahawks, minus five at minus 115. Uh, yes, they like to run the football. I get that. But they're going to be able to run the ball on the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. They're going to be able to throw the ball on the Cardinals. I think this is a big-time spot. I think the Seahawks beat them by double digits. You ride up to she bucks here. You don't ride at all. I'm going back to Indianapolis. I'm laying all six and a half points against the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> I, I love this Colts team. They are so nasty on the offensive line. Their defensive front seven is getting pressure. They can run the football. It is just amazing to me that this team lost an unbelievably talented quarterback, a blue chip if there ever was one. That's true. And they just said, hey, Jacoby, Come on. Come on in. We Let's, all good. We're, we're fine. We're just going to be just fine. We might not be Super Bowl contending fine, but maybe they are. I like them to win this division. I think they're going to beat up on this Raiders team. I don't like them. I'm not impressed by them. I touch downs a lot in the NFL. It ain't enough for me. 75 bucks minus 120. I got a little bit more juice on this one. What is that line? Colts minus oh, six and yeah. a half? Minus six and a half. I'm sorry, did I say that? I but it, yeah, minus 120 at minus six and a half. Yes, sir. I can get down with it. All right, third bet for me. I'm going to Detroit. I don't know if you're going to like this pick or not. That's fine. I like Matt Patricia a lot. The Lions, 2-0-1 on the year. They have been impressive. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think at some point the Chiefs are going to fall off at least a little bit. I'm not saying that the Chiefs are going to lose the game, although I think that is up in the air. That is a possibility. Um, because I, I think this is a different kind of Lions team. Right. I, I think that they can run the football. I think that Matt Stafford looks like he's in, in control of the game more than he has been. I think this defense is really good. I love TJ Hawkinson. He can block. He can run routes. He can catch the ball. Uh, I, I love the Lions here. I don't know that they win the game, but I've got a seven-point head start. So give me the Lions plus seven at minus 105, and let me put $50 on it. All right. So this is a team that you've had a tough time figuring out. So this is a team that I feel like I know well, and the team they're playing I feel like I know really well. Our, our Tennessee Titans are plus three and a half at the Falcons. Now listen, you bet them against the Browns, and I said, careful, this Browns team is for real. <laughs> They're going to compete for the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's just not so. They beat the hell out of the Browns. Then they went home, and they got beat up. Then they went on the road, and they got beat up. I think this is a hard-nosed, tough coach team. I think Mike Vrabel is going to have these boys ready to roll, and I think they can come away with the win. If they don't, we're talking about a field goal game. I like Tennessee against the Falcons. I don't believe in this Falcons team 
I've, I've bet against them every week. I've lost once against the Eagles. And then the Eagles absolutely gave that game away. The Falcons tried like hell to give it to them. I don't think they're very good. I, I think Julio Jones is an amazing football player, and I would like to see him play for somebody else because I don't think this Falcons <laughs> team is going to compete. I could be yeah. dead wrong. They've killed you two weeks in a row. Maybe what they did to the Browns was all smoke and mirrors because the Browns are just a trash football team. It's possible. But I, I still I believe in this Titans team, and I think there's spots you got to take, and I think this is it. And they had 10 days to prepare for this game. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Vrabel, he's a man. Yes, he is. He's willing to cut his ding ling off to win a Super Bowl. That's, that's true. That's true. Next one up for me, pick number four, the Cleveland Browns going to the Baltimore Ravens. Look, Ravens coming off a loss. It looked okay. Not It wasn't embarrassing by any stretch of the imagination. They covered the spread in Kansas City. Now they're coming back home. The Browns, people are starting to question them. People are questioning what's going on with Baker. Is Baker Mayfield not good? People being me. It's not just you, just that people overall. I mean, there's a reason why they were asking Freddie Kitchens in the press conference, like, are you thinking about giving up? Would you even you? consider it? Yeah, and I'm not going to get you on a tangent because we already did that. If you want to hear... You want to hear his passionate rant it about wasn't that. A, that? That was not a passionate rant. That was a heartfelt, honest opinion about what I think about this team and Freddie Kitchens. If you would like to hear that, go and check out the NFL That was not previews. screaming and hollering. That was not being a caricature. That was, that was real. Gary. Well, we, we are now in week four. I told you it was a beautiful thing. I loved it. But I don't have time for it right now. I feel like you're patronizing uh, me. No. No, 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 no. I think you might be selling. Give your point. I think you might be selling a little early. Take the Browns. That's what I'm doing. I've set money on fire before. Go ahead. Browns plus seven at the Ravens. I don't think that Baltimore is as good as everybody is claiming that they are. I don't think the Browns are as bad as everybody's claiming that they are. These two teams played in the last game of last season. Different circumstances right now, but Browns in a little bit of a desperation mode. Ravens still feeling really good about themselves. Seven points is a lot. Give me the Browns here. Plus the seven, 50 bucks at minus 110. I think Baker and that offense bounces back a little bit. Uh, I think they come in with a different game plan than what they had against the Rams. And I think it is successful. I don't know that they win the game. They don't have to to cover seven. Hey, I want to be honest about this and also want to get this. I don't know if you said this. The juice for the Titans game is minus 105. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so I got a little bit of break there. The line has actually moved to plus four, get an extra half point, but I'm going to keep the two, two and three and a half. So I'm fine with that. Right. I'm, that's, a, that's a pick I made. I'm riding with it. But I wanted to make sure I got my juice right. So okay. I, don't, I don't pay that high VIG if I lose. I can understand. I, I got your 105 Far right when here. I win. But, um, uh, you, you, see, this is your last one. Pick my last four. bet. This is the scariest bet I've made all year. All year. I don't believe in Mitch Trubisky at all as a quarterback against decent Defenses. I mean, I ain't good defenses. Decent. The Broncos, I thought, was going to be a really good defense. They're kind of a bottom-tier defense right now in the yep. NFL. They're not good. They held him to 16 points, zero offensive touchdowns. Okay, He he has yet to throw for a touchdown against somebody that wasn't one of the worst two defenses in the league. I don't think going to Washington got him right. Mike Lombardi made this statement on his podcast he wasn't talking about this game because the podcast came out after the Sunday lineup, so he didn't see this game, but it applies. We believe winning cures everything. It's true. Mike said something that I've never put in this phrase, but I've kind of always understood and believed it. Winning also sometimes hides flaws. True. I think this team being 2-1 and one right now hides a lot of the flaws that they have offensively. Yeah. I think the Vikings defense is a really good defense. Now, I think that Bears defense is really good. I think it's going to be low scoring. I like the Vikings offensive line, control the line of scrimmage. I think they can run the football. I got plus two, minus 110 big, 75%, uh, $75, sorry, on the Vikings. I'm going to forewarn you. This is going to, if I could predict anything in the world, I'm going to tell you there's going to come a point in time in the game 
where the Vikings have a chance to win this game. They're going to be down by like four or two and a half or something weird. And Kirk Cousins is going to throw the most soul-crushing interception you could ever imagine to blow this line. That's going to happen. I'm still betting it because I believe this Vikings team. I don't know that Mitchell can score. I don't know that the Bears can score unless they throw, unless Kirk gives them the pick sixes, Mitchell's not scoring. I could I could roll with that. I think it's a good pick. It's winner of this uh, win, winner of this game is second in the division behind the Packers. The Packers already have wins against everybody. Well, they haven't played the Lions yet, but they got yet. wins against both these teams. They're trailing. They got to get some divisional wins. Well, they got to get wins, period. And just wins, period. Yeah. I mean, both both are both are sitting at two and one though. Yes. So that's I mean that's always good. Always good to be on the plus side. What's your last? But your last pick. Last pick for me. This might be breaking time. The Philadelphia Eagles on Thursday night football traveling to the Green Bay Packers. There is just not a world that I can envision a 1-3 and three Eagles team and a 4-0 and oh Packers team. This is desperation mode for the Eagles. It seems like it would be way too easy to bet on the Packers here with all the injuries and everything that's going on. You know, Carson Wentz hasn't looked exactly right. Something's not quite right with the Eagles and whatnot. Look, they've still been impressive. They outgained the Lions last week. They probably should have won that game. Correct. I think in this spot, going on the road, you're not doing Sunday night football. You're not doing, you know, whatever. This is a short week. It's a shortened game plan. Just make it easy. I believe in Doug Peterson more than I believe in Matt LaFleur. Oh, not even close. In shortened week, I definitely want – I know that one team's healthier than the other. Yeah. I definitely want the better coach team on a short week, right? Exactly. That's that's why I'm rolling I, I believe that too. I think Peterson will get this team the win. Look, last year they got into a dire situation late. They figured out how to get it done. That group rallies together like no other team in the NFL. Give me the Eagles, plus five and a half at the Packers, $50 at minus 110. That is our NFL gambling picks for week number four. Boom. Record time. Record time. 17 minutes is not too shabby. Uh, go over to Winning Cures Everything. Check out everything over there. Hey, before we get out of here, why don't we talk to our buddy from Three Dog Thursday podcast, Mr. TJ Reeves. All right, he is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can follow him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. He's down in Tampa. TJ, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, and just like we said on your college football podcast, we're only looking forward right now. We're not looking back to last week because it was rough. Straight ahead. Rough, rough with the <laughs> underdogs. Uh, Giannini, how did you let that happen with the Cleveland Browns? You were in the stadium, and you could not will the Browns to a three-dog Thursday win for me against the Rams. So On, so, on Sunday, I'm bringing up a bad memory, am I no, not? No, I'm just going to say this, and we'll get out of it. That is simply zero people in the stadium. I was there. They had first and goal from the four, and no one in the stadium believed that they would score a touchdown. Not, wow. not one person really believed they could actually score. Wade Phillips embarrassed Freddie Kitchens. Well, and Aaron Donald is a phenomenal player, and the Rams are great, but uh, look, I, you know, I need to be cheered up a little bit here, too, because my Buccaneers <laughs> had it in the palm of their hand despite uh, Daniel oh, oh. Jones' heroics for the Giants. All you got to do is make the field goal, and everything is, is hunky-dory. And instead, the rookie kicker misses the field goal, and now you got questions about everything, including the color of the uniforms and the color of his cleats because he had on the Usain Bolt neon yellow cleat last week and missed three kicks. The rookie kicker. So to be fair, uh, it, it, it was shouldn't tough. have come down to a kick. I like agree. <laughs> when you're up by 18 at home, yes. When you, when, you know, it's like Washington State. We were talking on the college podcast. Washington State's up 30 points at home in the second half. How do you let that happen in the NFL? If you're up by 18 points at home at halftime, you got to put that game away against a rookie quarterback. They did not. The Bucks realized it. Uh, so, and Bruce Arians is right with this. He's a veteran coach. You won a game at the end with Carolina that a lot of people thought you weren't going to win. Now you lost a game that most believed you should have won. This is what happens in the NFL. Now you have to regroup. And my Bucks, by the way, getting a lot of points at LA with the with the Rams coming back home. What is that? A ten point got, line? A nine, nine, 
You got 10 there. Jameis Winston has looked good and has put points on the board. That one is one we're going to talk about on Three Dog Thursday for sure. Buccaneers at Rams. I could uh, I could get down with that. Um, do we want to stay in in the great state of Florida? You got any? You I, got anybody else that I, might be leaning I, towards? Hey, I I think the my do not laugh at me. Do <laughs> stop smiling, not... Giannini. Stop smiling at me. The Miami Dolphins have not had a lead yet this year, obviously. They have not. They've had, they had one touchdown. They had a chance they, against the Cowboys. They had a chance to have a, This is what it's come to. The team, the team that had Dan Marino throw for 6,000 yards and 87 touchdowns back in one season, this is what it's come to. We almost had a lead in the game with the Cowboys. This is what they're reduced to. They have one off. They have one touchdown the entire year. Uh, but uh, I, I look at this game with the Chargers coming all the way east and Miami getting 16 and a half points. I think they will be better at home with Josh Rosen. I think they figured some things out. I know the Cowboys are better than the Chargers, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I know that Phillip Rivers has played poorly in the second half of all three of their games, including their overtime win in week one. And I think that's too many points. I think this is a week where Miami may not win, but they'll at least keep it close, and that's too many points. Somebody's going to probably try to talk me out of that either right now or on the Three Dog Thursday podcast, but I'm looking strongly at the Dolphins. I'm, I'm not going to try and talk you out of it. No, I'm a, I'm a Charger guy. I like Phillip Rivers. I, I've been enamored with him for his entire career. I, I This team has problems. They've got a yeah. lot of problems. That that loss to I, – I picked the Chargers to go to the Super Bowl this year. Uh, that loss to the Texans just about did me in. Like I already, I, I think, in I think they could, yeah, they could lose to everybody. Well, are, they not, they, they are they dialing one eight hundred? Are they dialing one eight hundred Melvin Gordon at any point here, or is it like Tom Hanks and Castaway with Wilson? No, he just he's, they, he's, 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 not, it's, he's it's, just it's, floating away and never coming back. Yeah, What's the deal? It's not a run, well. I think Melvin's going to come back because he's got no leverage. But it's not a running game problem. Their offensive line is bad. Their secondary is bad, and and I just don't. Well, they've I got injuries, can, and that's right. Like that's the biggest thing. It's just a, it's a bunch of injuries, and they, I mean, even beyond the injury, they just look lost sometimes. Like I, 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 we talked a couple of years ago about whether or not Anthony Lynn was a good coach, and then last year, completely flipped us around. That both myself and Chris and I was a huge believer, and this year it, it looks like last year never happened. I don't know they what is going them, on. Well. They've won some big games in the past, but again, Rivers is kind of Jekyll and Hyde in stretches, and right now he's not played well really in the last three weeks, in the last two weeks for sure, in the second half of the game. So that, that's one that we're going to strongly look at on Three Dog Thursday. And one more kind of under the, under the weird, uh, you know, maybe it's the Cowboys at the Saints, but maybe it's the Chiefs at the Lions. The Cowboys and the Chiefs both may be due for a clunker game where they don't play well, where they turn the ball over on the road. Both of those dome situations for the Saints and the Lions, just something food for thought. I'm, I'm not for sure that I'm taking either one of those, but those are interesting games at home where, where the Chiefs look so dynamic right now on offense. Aren't they due to play a bad game? Maybe. Well, well and, and to be fair, uh, Matt Patricia, like – it he can dial up a pretty good defense. I think he's got some guys with the Lions. Uh, the Saints looked really good in Seattle last week. Well, the Saints, so, in, the, in the game against the Cowboys, the Saints are the better team from top to bottom outside of the trigger man. Outside of the quarterback, I think the Saints are better from top to bottom. So that, they, looked, they looked it in Seattle. They looked the part me. in Seattle. So, And I think this yeah, could also be – now, my, people on the Rams are going to be very upset when I say this. <laughs> <laughs> this this could be a an NFC championship matchup early in the season. Yeah. Well, and Dallas and Dallas obviously has got weapons uh, around Dak Prescott as well. But you're right, he's dynamic. You've got Elliott back running it. He can throw it to Cooper. He can throw it to Witten. Uh, but again, they could have a game here where they play poorly in that hostile setting. We'll see. That'll, that'll be another one we'll be talking about this week on Three Dog Thursday, guys. We uh, we talked to you last week about the Tampa Bay plus 1,200 odds to win the NFC South. <laughs> it, that, hurt, that hurt my feelings when they lost that game. I thought, 
I need that. It game. hurts your feelings. I'm the guy doing the post game show in the locker room, and it's a morgue. Continue. What's your point? No, Go ahead. I, I needed that game to justify my my the money the, the capital that I put on that plus 1200. I thought I I really need this one. I gotta ha- you gotta be able to beat the Giants. So the worst defense in football outside of the Dolphins, and yeah. you gotta be able to beat them. Chris so. had a, a nice vested interest in the rest of the season. Well, but the, you know, the Daniel, Daniel Jones played great in the game last week, so you give them credit. But here's the other thing. Uh, yeah, the Panthers won, but they're one and two. The Falcons lost. They're one and two. And the Saints are just two and one. So there is a lot of football here still to go. Sure. The, the real question becomes with the Bucks not having a home game at Raymond James Stadium for the next seven weeks, guys, not until November – are they going to be able to hold it together and have a fourth win or a fifth win by the time you get to November? And that's that's what they've got to start trying to figure out. Where do they get three or four wins in the next six games? Something like that to stay in the race. We'll see. Well, the thing that, that scares me about the division after one week, obviously, of watching this new world order in, in that division is the Panthers might have had an injury that caused them to be substantially better. And, and there is a world in which Kyle Allen is just better than Cam Newton is today. And and then the same thing with the Saints of if they can just hold serve and go 500 until Drew gets back, um, then, then you know, yep. I, I think well, it's Well, you guys have seen it all the time, and I have too. If Dallas clocks them, the Saints, then my Buccaneers roll in there after playing the Rams and find a way to win. Now everybody's going, how quick can we get that healing on the Drew Brees thumb again? The Seattle (laughs) game is a distant memory. And that's why we love the NFL, and that's why they line it up every week, and and things can change from one week to the next or every couple weeks. You have got that right. right, He is is TJ Reeves. You can find him on Twitter, at BuckSidelineGuy. You can also find him on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Comes out every Thursday. It's a good time. It's a good listen. Make sure you go and check it out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. Make sure you hit subscribe and tell him that we sent you in the review section. TJ, we appreciate you being here, buddy. Always great to be with you, boys. Happy underdogs this week. Let's see if the underdog bounces back. We appreciate TJ for joining the show. As always, he joins us every single week to talk about the NFL, college football, etc. If you have not already, Subscribe to the show on YouTube or whatever your favorite podcast app is. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. Leave a nice review. We would definitely appreciate that. That helps out more than you know. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Man, what a what a crazy, crazy week. We're going to try to get some guests on. I, I yeah. mean, we love TJ. We appreciate him coming on. We got we got a couple people that we're talking to. We're trying to get them. Yeah, we had uh, we had some John Roser, friends, some new friends. Yeah, last week had John Roser from the Chris Vernon show uh, join us. Is definitely going to um, be back. He'll he'll definitely be back in. Um, we're talking. going to talk to a few more people. We'll have a uh, an interview. We're going to try for every Friday. We'll see if that works or not. But uh, but yeah, ambitious. we're going to try. It's very ambitious, but I like talking to people. So you know, it is what it is. But yeah, uh, check out that show on Friday. Of course, like I said, subscribe. Subscribe on the podcast. Subscribe on YouTube, etc. Uh, and pretty soon, I think the videos might be up on Facebook. But we'll see. So uh, that's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for this week uh, until the interview anyway. We appreciate you guys for hanging around with us. We'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.